Did you know that mint errors and varieties are not the same thing? If you don't know the difference and you've never heard of a dye variety versus a variety, then you need to watch this video. Hello everyone, this is Daniel and you are watching Coin Help You. And I am a coin dealer and I've been in this business all my life. And I do these videos based on my experiences and the knowledge that I've gained throughout that experience. And today we're going to talk about mint errors versus varieties. A lot of people get this mixed up. They don't understand the difference. And it can mean the difference between a big payday and losing money. One mistake that I see people making, and I'm going to give you a perfect example of how easy it is to buy something that is not represented properly. This is called a Spear Bison. It is a 2005 Jefferson Nickel, and they put a Bison on the reverse. And you can see this. This is a die mark, okay? And that's why they call it a Spear Bison. It looks like the Bison was speared, okay, the Buffalo here. Now, I've seen versions where there was a die crack, okay, on the haunches back here, and they were calling it a Spear Bison, and people were buying it as a Spear Bison. I don't see that as much anymore. But a, a die crack is typically not worth any money. A die crack is die wear, die deterioration. And obviously, if you have a rim the rim, which is a cud, or if you have a, you know, a broken die, those kind of die cracks, die breaks, can add some value. But just a die crack in and of itself is usually not signified as a variety. You know, I get that sometimes what they call the Lincoln crack skull a variety. Some people do collect them. But nine times out of ten, your die cracks are just not going to signify any extra value. So you could go in and you could buy one of these and, you know, spend $100 and realize that it was just a die crack back here, not the actual die mark, okay? Now, so now let's go into some more details. Go over to my website, okay, coinoxushelp.com, and I have a, a menu bar up here. If you go over to my homepage, I've got coin values, photo grading. I'm going to come down here to the mint error values. Okay. I also have an app on Google Play as well. Well, what I want to show you is that there are three different divisions. And what we do is it's P for Planchet Division, D for Die Variety Division, and S for Striking Division. Okay. And these are very important. Okay. Because the Planchet Division, those are all meant errors. Anything that happens under this division is always going to be a meant error. So you have improper alloy mixture, you have defective planchet, maybe a lamination or a clip planchet. And in the planchet division, they happen during the creation of the planchet. Okay, so in other words, it could be the mixing of the alloy or, or whatever it might be. But it signifies when the planchet was being created, it's a mint error, and it happens under P, the planchet division. Okay. Now, when we come down here to the dye variety division, this is where most people get mixed up, okay? Some of these, or most of these errors, we call them errors, but in reality, you don't know whether they were mistakes or they were done on purpose sometimes. You know, obviously, a clip planchet probably wasn't on purpose, but then you don't always know that. That's not what's important here. Intent is not what's important. So, in the dye variety division, you have... Double die, which everybody knows about, um, even a die crack would be considered it if, if it was a run where there was breaks as far as inside the coin, a lot of die breaks, things like that. But more than likely, it's going to be something like a die break here that you see. And this is what they call a retain cut, and this is what they call a broken out piece, which is actually a cut. You also have um, shattered dies. Okay. And basically... What you have here is you have what they call a die variety and then a variety, okay? A double die or a repunch mint park before 89 and before are when the die is being created, basically. So, in other words, the die is not finished until it has all the design elements that make it a finished working die that's ready to strike a coin, okay? So, in other words, I come in... And we know that a double die is a die variety. But after the die starts striking coins 
and something's modified on it or changed on it or somehow a mint mark a mint mark omitted would obviously be a die variety but if the mint mark was missing because a mint employee removed it then it would be just a variety it wouldn't be a die variety at that point and that's one of the things that we run into with with the 1922 no d and weak d okay some of them are considered struck through um, as far as die varieties are concerned even the die pair two that the d was removed it's still just a variety it's not a die variety so anyways when we're starting to look at this, you've got to know the difference. So basically, your dyes and your varieties happen during the second division, which is a dye variety division, or the, the dye division. And that's very important. All these things like misplaced dates, uh, motto varieties, missing letters and numbers and things like that, those would fall under the varieties. But that doesn't mean all of these are going to become varieties or get a nickname. Like missing letters and things on coins is pretty common. You're not usually going to typically get a variety out of it. Okay, sometimes I'll get a nickname, but struck through grease and things like that is typically not going to be a variety. It's too common, and there's just not a demand for it. So now the third division is the striking division. Okay, now these, anything that happens here is a mint error. It's not a variety. It's not a die variety. These are things like strike through, uh, cap dies. I've struck through a cap die, a brockage strike, and I'll show you a few examples here. You know, these are all mint errors, and these are going to be usually dramatic, and they will have some value to them. Unlike the planchet division, where they're kind of minor and they'll have some value, but the striking division has some of your most valuable mint errors in existence. So you want something to happen during the strike if you want, or if you actually want a valuable mint error because they tend to be more dramatic, unlike a die crack or unlike a struck through grease or something like that. You know, it's not to say that there's not valuable errors in the planchet division and that some of these that aren't dramatic are not valuable, like the counter die clash, but more than likely you want a mint error to be dramatic, to be worth a lot of money. Then you come down to waffled coins. Now, you know, a waffle coin is a cancel coin. It's, it's actually post-mint damage. Okay? It's not really an error, but people still collect these. This is probably the most valuable damage on a coin, uh, but it's not really that valuable. You can buy these for you know $20-some dollars and sometimes a little bit more. It depends on the denomination. Then you have strike doubling. And strike doubling does not add value. It's not a double die. It's not even related to a double die. And I have articles on this here on my website, and you can see it. But yet, I put it in here because technically it is die damage to the coin, okay? And it's under the striking division. But it doesn't add value to a coin. That's It's just too confused with a double die, and it's not a good idea to try to throw these up and say they're possible double dies. People really get this confused, okay? So hopefully, this helps you understand the difference between a mint error and a variety and a die variety. Um, thank you for watching my latest video, and please like, share, and comment. And click the little bell beside the, the subscribe button and have a great day.